and do a quick tutorial on how to create these animated GIFs, right? Kind of like a vi using video, using a short video. So I'm going to go through the tutorial in just a moment. These are some more examples um, other than the ones that I shown, did show in class. Um, and I'm going to show you, talk you through how to do it. All right, so I'm going to go into Photoshop. And I already took, let's say I already took my video. If you were doing the video using the photo booth, you should have taken the video, dragged it onto your desktop, and then opened up Photoshop. So I'm going to be using a generic video that I found off a place called Pexels Video. I'm going to go to the File menu, and instead of Im uh, creating a new one or opening a file, I'm going to import a video file. So I'm import video frames to layers. Okay, now I need to choose my video. So my video is actually on my desktop. I'm using this little coffee cup image here, and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. The next screen that Photoshop is going to bring me to, it's going to show me the length of my video. Now, you do not want this to be a long video at all, because what we're going to do is we're going to break it down into frames and then draw into those individual frames. So I don't want this video to be all that long at all. So I'm actually going to shorten it up. The actual video is only about eight seconds, so I've probably taken close to a little bit closer than half of that. I can move these guys over and this is the part of video that I'll have then. Okay. And then I'm also going to click on this guy right here because I want to limit it. When you see a video, um, it's made up of a bunch of single frames and I don't want to draw on every single frame. I want to draw on like maybe every other frame. So I get most of the action. So I'm clicking this. If your video is very long, you're going to want to make this number even larger. I'm going to go ahead and hit okay. And Photoshop is going to open up that video in here. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to need to take out is what's called my timeline panel. And the timeline panel is where your animation comes from. Now when I open up my timeline panel, you're going to see that I have a bunch of different what are called frames here, right? And each frame has a number. I'm also now going to open up my layers panel. Mine is docked here, so I'm going to pull it off from the side and I want to pull it down. I have 70 layers here. So I'm going to go all the way down to the first one. You can see that I have frame one and I have layer one. And at this point, I'm ready to begin my animation. It's that it's that simple. So I have my brush. I already set myself up. I have a soft edge brush. Um, you can use any color. You can choose colors here. You can pick different colors. You can add different effects. Um, let's say I wanted to make a heart come out of this coffee cup here, right? So in frame one and layer one, I want to start the, the heart like this. Then I'm going to go to frame two and layer two, make sure it's highlighted, and I want to extend the heart. Frame three, layer three, continue to extend this. I could have went smaller too, um, but for demonstration's sake, you're going to see it kind of come together. Five, five, six, six. And you can continue to draw like this. Seven, seven. Okay. Now, if I go back through it, you're going to see that my heart is going to start to, it starts to build in there, right? Now, let's say I wanted to add something, right? Like maybe like, um, maybe let's say I wanted to, to outline the cup or something too, right? Let me switch to black. Um, let me go back to frame one. Make sure you have frame, uh, sorry, layer one highlighted there. So now I'm kind of doing, I almost like, so what this is doing is it's creating a secondary animation. And in a lot of rules of animation, this is a great way to kind of build upon what you're showing, right? Having two type, oops, two types of animation happening at the same time. Five, five, six, six, seven, seven. kind of did a lot there at the end. Um, let me go back in there, right? Here's something else very cool that you could do. If I zoomed in, I just use Command Plus to zoom in. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to switch back to white. And I want to add some like little details in here with that, right? Right here, two, two. And I'm just kind of like tracing around it, almost like to show, I don't know, just kind of having some fun with it there. Let me move my image up a little bit. Because the video doesn't really change the, like, not a whole lot is moving in the video. I'm able to zoom in and work in this way, right? Four, four. Now, you, if you've worked with the animation before, then you might be saying, well, how come I can't use the onion skin, right? Well, this is this is slightly different. Um, I'm actually drawing in individual layers. You, you would only could have used the, the onion skin if you were drawing within the same layer, and that's not exactly what I've got going on here. Seven, seven. 
seven and seven, make sure I'm in there. Now, I could continue drawing into here. I'm actually gonna stop at this point just so that you can get an idea of what I did. And you know, you, you get the idea. You, you have to draw into the corresponding number here. This number right here is the space between the frames, so you can change that number if you'd like. If I'm not using the rest of these layers, which is a lot, they're 70, I just click down the first one, I hold shift. I scroll up to the top, click on the last one, it selected them all, and I can delete them. Now, I want to do the same thing down here, right? See how just blank these out? I want to go from 8 to 70, and I'm going to delete them. All right, so I've got a really quick animation that's happening here. Um, so let me zoom out, and I can show you the animation here. And I'm going to hit play. This is the space between the frames. This is going to make it loop forever, so you can change that. You can change these individual numbers, or you can shift-click and change them all at the same time if you, if you wanted to experiment with what that looked like. And now if I go to play it, you'll see my little heart's going to pop in there. I actually, I have quite a lot of space between my frames here. I'm going to actually make that a lot less. So from there to there, I want it to be, I don't know, let's go really tight. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. And there's my little frame and frame animation. Now, one additional thing that you can do here, let's say that I want, oh, man, I want my image to be black and white, right? Well, then I can create an adjustment layer. Adjustment layers um, are come from this little circle guy right here. And there's a few things that I can do. Actually, let's play with hue saturation instead. Let's say I wanted to change the color dramatically. It's really important that this layer is at the top because it's going to affect everything underneath it. It's not going to so much affect my animation unless I shift and hold. So I click on the first one, hold shift, click on the last one. And now I'm going to go in there and I'm going to adjust the colors. And it's going to adjust the colors across the board. So in all of, now it looks like fire or something, right? I'm just going to adjust the colors across the board in all of the frames, or at least it should. It's not right now, but I might have to go through and, and apply it, right? So actually what I'm going to do, it's, a, it's here that I need to do it. So in all of these frames, I want those to be visible, right? So in this, I want to, I need to go in and turn it on. So I'm kind of just adding, let's see, adding adding and adding. Now alternatively what you could use, you can have one that maybe like it, this, if I do it in this way, it's going to blink on and off when I go. So let's try that. Let's see what that looks like. It's kind of a fun little gift right there too. Something else I could do is I could put a picture above all these things and then put a mode on it and have it blend, which would be an, another interesting way to have this be done. Okay, so there you have your simple animated video gif um, also called rotoscoping where I'm drawing into the individual layers that correspond with the frames that are created in my timeline panel. So have fun and good luck.